Hi, my name's Dr. Jane Andrews. This is about take 122 of this video, so I'm going to go for it. Right, I want to briefly talk to you about applying for fellowship, senior fellowship of the Higher Education Academy. I also want to start with associate fellowship. So we've got four different levels. If you've looked at the presentation that I've written, and you would have found this link through that, so you would have done, please turn to page seven of the presentation, which is the one with the areas of activity, the core knowledge, and the professional values on it. Right, to apply for associate fellowship of the Higher Education Academy in WMG, we would normally expect you to be in a student-facing role. You're more than likely to be one of our professional support staff. Now, by this, I mean, those of you that really do that crucial job on the front line supporting our students, whether it's through Welcome Week, whether it's through the extracurricular activities, whether it's on the reception in the master's postgraduate office or undergraduate office, or those guys that work in the project office. Likewise, technological demonstrators, those of you who are, who are learning developers, all of that stuff comes into associate fellowship. Have a look at page seven and you'll see a list of and A, you need to be able to show that you can do all of those. And then in K, K1 and 2. Now, subject material is pretty broad here, and it's a subject that you're dealing with. So if you're dealing with Freshers' Week, it's the subject stuff around that. I can help you apply for this. So if you're one of our front-facing professional support staff, or possibly a PhD student who, for whatever reason, is not going through the university programme, please apply for this. Now the next category, Higher Education Association Fellow, is for most of us. It's where we generally tend to start. Those of you that are new to teaching or are newly appointed should really be enrolled on the APTE, which is Warwick University's um, teaching experiential route, but it's also got an element of hands-on teaching, practice, personal reflection and tutoring in it. That's outside of the school. Now, those of you that haven't done that, that have been appointed more than two years, please think about applying for fellowship. It's your chance to get professional recognition of the fantastic job you do. Have a look at the slide on page seven of the presentation. You need to be able to demonstrate all of those. And as I said, you would normally have been teaching for a couple of years. Senior teaching fellow, sorry, senior fellowship of the higher education. These is aimed at people who've been teaching in a front-facing student support, active teaching role for four to five or more years. This is most of us. Now, unfortunately, if you've come from industry and you've got lots of experience in industry, but you're new to teaching, you can't really apply for senior fellowship. You need to apply for fellowship. In all fairness, there's not much difference between the two. In fact, in regards of professional waiting, there isn't any. For senior fellowship, though, you do need to be able to write two case studies showing how you've made a difference to other people's teaching as well as your own. So you need to demonstrate leadership and management and a little bit of strategy. But the strategic governance one is the principal fellowship. Those of you that are very senior and want to apply for principal fellowship, I can help and support you. But I will put you in touch with the guy who's central to the university who does all that. For WMG, we concentrate mostly for our teaching staff on fellowship and senior fellowship. For our professional support staff, it's associate fellowship. OK, then, guys. Well, that's me for now. Goodbye from Tamworth and thank you for listening.